Hello, hello. It is Brian J. Downey here with NotFest.com, and I am joined by, if you are part of the horror community especially, I think it's safe to say this man is an is a screen legend, an icon. I know those words get thrown around a little too much these days, like, you know, everybody gets called the goat, and I think they forget that that's, that's supposed to be, the, it's goat singular, it's not goats. But uh, but you're but if we're gonna say goats plural, you're definitely a goat in the horror game, sir. Mr. Bill Mosley, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank nice. you. Yes, and I, I I'm not really big on the icon. If you look it up, it means a secular image that has become actually something people pray to. <laughs> that is why I well, secular in the sense that uh, you know a painting of the Virgin Mary. I mean, maybe, yeah. obviously the Russian Orthodox Church had a lot of icons. Yeah, uh, I just consider myself a lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> so, so I guess I, I guess that's I should, an icon that's great. I'll qualify. I guess I should clarify that I, I do not pray to Metallica, although I could be. <laughs> well, <laughs> you could do worse. Let's put yeah. it that way. I, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence that might point right. to right. Sure. The Beatles. Uh, yeah. So uh, there's a, a lot I want to talk to you about while I've got you. Uh, primarily, the reason for us getting together here is to talk about Ice Nine Kills and the Silver Scream con but prior to that i want to tell you on a personal note and i'm curious how often you might encounter this i don't know that it's perhaps a generational thing but i actually saw chainsaw 2 years before i ever saw the original texas chainsaw massacre uh i remember you know it was a vhs viewing i believe it was on hbo you know i, I was certainly watching it uh at an age where I, I maybe wasn't supposed to but i was like right in that you know that cusp of uh yeah. of getting interested in all of that stuff and so that was really my introduction to that franchise to that mythology that story and those characters and your character was every bit as integral as every every other part of that great ensemble is that something that you've encountered over the years is that seemed to be uh, a that common people, experience that you mean that guess? people saw saw two before they saw saw one yeah i yeah I, I i have had that um you know it's funny because uh i mean for me that wasn't the case uh i saw texas chainsaw massacre probably back in 1976 i saw it in boston Speaking of the Silver Scream in Danvers, mm -hmm. um, I saw uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre on a double bill. Uh, it was the second half of Enter the Dragon was the first one. It was at a theater uh, nice. in the combat zone of Boston, you know, basically Boston's Times Square, an old, the old Paramount Theater, and uh, which had been a glamorous theater in its day and it kind of fallen on Hard times was showing, uh, you know, movies like uh, Bruce Lee and and uh, <laughs> Texas Chainsaw. Um, but uh, I remember seeing it and just being uh, really stunned by it. Uh, I just was uh, really blown away by it, and, and not you know in in a good way in the sense that it was an amazing movie, but also in a bad way in the sense that it was, um, you know, that it was uh, really uh, disturbed me really bit yes. me and uh uh so obviously that came first that was the, that was the egg not the chicken for me and uh you know i chased that for uh for years and finally just to kind of uh expiate or at least ease exorcise some of that uh some of that terror uh i made a short film called the texas chainsaw manicure set in a beauty parlor where uh, le uh, where a woman wants to get a manicure, and Leatherface comes in with a chainsaw, starts uh, working on her. She screams, passes out, and when she comes to, she's like, "No, <laughs> oh!" And she's got a <laughs> fabulous manicure, and she goes out to show her husband, uh, played by uh, me, and um, I had like a little twenty second cameo as the hitchhiker from the original Chainsaw. Brilliant. And a friend of mine showed that to Toby Hooper. Uh, and uh, that was probably 1984. And then uh, in 1986, uh, I got the call saying, uh, you know, we want you to play a Chop Top and chain. Pretty amazing. Based on, you know, my 22nd cameo of a short film that I had written and produced back in 1984 on Staten Island. 
in uh, Sonia's hair fashions. And, uh, you know, then that led to Chop Top. Incredible. And, you know, I, especially at that time, for things to make their way around like that, of course, now there's social media and you can see things that fans make and, and parodies and inspired buys and fan fiction. But yeah, yeah especially back in the day. Prior. Back in the days there, that was pre-internet and uh, you really, that was almost pre, for the most part, it was, it was pre-VHS. So, and they weren't showing Texas Chainsaw Massacre on TV. Right. So I basically had to, you know, hunt it down. I, I was so freaked out by it when I saw it in Boston that I ended up seeing it a few more times trying to uh, normalize it. So I chased it down to a bunch of different theaters across the country over time, uh, just trying to get so familiar with it that it wouldn't have the same, it wouldn't, its claws wouldn't sink as deep and uh, never worked. It just got worse, actually. Wow, that's interesting. I love that idea. Poison <laughs> Ivy. <laughs> yeah, and I love that idea of, of trying to normalize it and trying to kind of exert some control there because yeah. I've i held for a long time. I, I didn't end up seeing the original Chainsaw until uh, probably my late teens. And I've held for the rest of my adult life so far that it is the scariest film I've ever seen. And I'm a horror fan. I've seen yeah. tons. I've seen gorier and crueler and super more supernatural you know you, you name it any any other way that could be quote unquote scarier in air quotes and uh, there's just something about how visceral and i think even the the, the performances the production value it, it it feels like you're watching a snuff film you know it really does it's like cinema verite you know what what really freaked me out was uh, years actually after we had uh, shot chainsaw 2 I was at a party with uh, Toby Hooper, our wonderful director, and uh, he just uh, allowed us to how he thought the original Chainsaw was a comedy. <laughs> I mean, I was saying, you know, it's a fun, you know, it's a lot of fun. We were really having a hoot doing Chainsaw 2. And yeah. you know, that was kind of, you know, you can understand that as a comedy or see it more. But he thought the original was a comedy. And I was like going, whoa, man, this guy's got some sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. You know, uh, my daughter is 14 now and uh, in the last year or two started showing her horror films and just, you know, trying to kind of dip our toes in and get our feet wet. The first thing I showed her was Child's Play because I thought for that same reason, like, right. you know, it's comical and and uh, and she said that was that was great. That was a lot of fun, but it wasn't scary. I want to be scared. Show me something scary. And I said, OK, let's put on a nightmare on Elm Street. Same thing. Wow, that was really cool and it was really smart. And I love that concept. And I'm not scared. Show me something scary. And she's continued to challenge me. And we've done uh, The Conjuring and uh, but he dragged me to hell. Uh, you know, I'm going around. I'm thinking about what scares me. Right. <laughs> you know, which hey. movies did I find scary? And yeah. uh, I I've been holding on to uh, Chainsaw One in my back pocket. It was like my, you know, if I exhaust. <laughs> all other attempts it's like okay you really want to be scared right guess we'll watch this that's, that's my wife by the way yeah, and dog might, you might hear my dog <laughs> and dog right. yeah that's one of we have uh, we're, we're currently uh, dog sitting too we have two of our own so there's four barking dogs around here so we've anyway. got one we've got one barking dog around here but if, yeah. she, if she gets going she'll make up for yeah, there's dog. another one that's uh, that's scampers right there a little one scampers. uh that's lucinda <laughs> it's in the already, even though it's uh, six o'clock here. And I don't know what happened to Mandy. I think Mandy got put outside. So. Uh, you can you can tell her I'm in pajama pants. You just can't see yeah. sitting down. Yeah, I, I got this. This is my uh, donate blood shirt. World Blood Donor Day. And it was funny because um, I thought I would uh, donate some blood, but um, uh, they didn't really want my blood because I had a uh, I had a cough. <laughs> So wow, no, your blood. Like we'll give right you, now. we'll give you the T-shirt, but we don't want your blood. <laughs> My blood is good today, though, but uh, not not the one I got the shirt. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and I so I will I will let you know how that goes. But yeah, so but let's. Uh, and I, well, I want to know how how did you get the part of the uh, of the the cop or the bailiff, whatever the, the actual character is called, uh, in the new Ice Nine video that we just shot. Mm -hmm. That's a that that's a uh, good question. So I uh, a guy named Mike Mowry who is right. Well, there you go, good old Mike. Manager, yeah, he's um, 
he and I go back to the 90s from the mm -hmm. art punk scene and, and we've been uh, very close friends and colleagues for a number of years now and, and kind of traveled in, in similar career arcs with different things we're interested in and all of that. And at some point, he introduced me to Spencer when he uh, was, you know, early into managing Ice Nine Kills because he just uh, realized right out of the gate that he and I were kindred spirits and yeah. had a lot of overlapping interests. And then as a writer, that just naturally developed into a relationship where, uh, you know, Spencer will come to me and say, we're going to do a deluxe edition of the album in a VHS box. We need somebody to write the fake synopsis on the back and some fake uh, movie reviews to, and, you know, I'll do that. Or uh, we're doing a novelization of the silver scream that my buddy wrote. We need somebody to, to write a, a fake author bio for the character he created as the oh, wonderful. Oh, that's great. Those are fun jobs. And so, yeah. So I've done a, a lot of things uh, like that and um, yeah, just sort of, you know, developed into a friendship. And then he asked me if I wanted to play, a cop in the video that spoiler alert uh gets his head blown off and the problem there is it was the day before that i would have had to go get a life cast and yes. then it would have been two days of shooting a couple of days after that and i really debated i really wanted to i also had a full beard at the time and they mallory and hey. spencer said i'd have to shave the beard to do the life cast and then i said if you got if you got anything else that's one day you know right. <laughs> beggar being choosers here yeah. it's a huge a hugely flattering and a, and a great honor and super fun to do it um but it, it definitely worked out the way that it should because they said yeah well you can you want to play the bailiff instead and they didn't tell me that the judge was going to be joe bob briggs and i'd be standing next to him all day so that was uh that was pretty exciting yeah. and well, right he got he got he got the sit down job and he got the so that... job yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, and then I and then and then I was googling uh, court bailiff's facial hair because I didn't know if you know the protocol. You know, cops can't really have beards; they can be clean shaven or a mustache. Well, I, so I don't shave the beard anyway, but you know, kept the stash, and here we are. Uh, well, I, I'm here. To, I'm here to prove that uh, cops think, can't have beards. Well, I think I think you've risen high enough in the ranks where you you yes. know you got that Serpico detective thing going, where you can yes, absolutely. You know, do whatever you want undercover yes i'm yeah. you know i'm i'm uh, infiltrating the smith brothers <laughs> well, I'm, the, I'm, the cough drops yeah i'm more <laughs> headlong beards <laughs> or maybe zz top you know zz top I'm not, not quite there but La yeah. lars ulrich's dad i think he's still yeah the, maybe that's it he's the gandalf with the right on winning so and that is a great segue uh to ask you how did you get roped into the whole uh Ice Nine Kills universe, the Incaverse is, is what I like to call it. Uh, it's, you know, the same reason. Uh, Spencer's a big horror fan, and uh, I got uh, asked to do the Silver Scream uh, a while ago. The first video was a, maybe, a, what was it, about a year and a half ago, uh, where um, uh, one by one, we're all on kind of a Zoom, and one by one, the band gets uh, killed by some masked stranger. And um, happy to do that. Uh, really enjoyed doing the job. Another sit down job. It's always fun for me to just sit there and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look at the screen and do my thing. So uh, I did that. Uh, that, you know, we all got along really well. Um, and then, uh, then came uh, video number two, where uh, sans beard and with shorter hair. Um, uh, we've already taken Spencer in and uh, Ricky Dean Logan and I have a, really a lot of fun just uh, duking it out, me the cop, him the, uh, the slick lawyer uh, with poor Spencer in the, in the balance, either innocent or very guilty. And, you know, we just had so much fun doing that, that uh, of course it has to, you know, continue. And the fun part actually is that not only do we do that in the videos, but of course we still do it. Um, you know, on Twitter and uh, via Instagram, however we can kind of get at each other. You know, we still, I, I keep proclaiming Spencer's guilt. And he's going down and he keeps saying, I'm innocent, and you're crazy. And, you know, whatever happened at habeas corpus, I don't know what even what that means, but you know, so, you know, so we just, you know, developed a friendship and kind of a funny, you know, you know, funny, uh, you know, back and forth on uh, social media, so. And, uh, you know, the other thing is, is that um, 
I'm a big fan of, uh, I was a big fan of a great convention in uh, Worcester, Mass, called Rock and Shock. Mm. And um, Rock and Shock is no more, but uh, it was great that, uh, that Spencer uh, started, um, you know, or at least is about to start the Silver Scream Horror Con in, uh, in Danvers, which is not quite Worcester, but it's, uh, it's close enough. And I'm really looking forward to going there. Yeah, I think it's it's so great. Uh, there's just something about the world that Ice Nine Kills has built over these last couple of records and the different fandoms that are now intersecting and yeah. overlapping as a result. And the kids that are into Ice Nine Kills music are learning about all these great films and books and everything. And, and I've found it in my experience, you know, uh, people my age getting into the band via the horror you know i've told a lot of my yeah. horror buddies like there's this band that's heavy and has these great melodic choruses and every song's about a different classic horror movie yeah it usually gets the hmm and then they go wait oh these guys are really yeah. good too that's it's, right it's been and fun it's cool and about you i see your uh sam hayne t-shirt and i'm a buddy of london may oh uh, sure i saw him with his uh, devil lock uh there was a yeah. uh there was a convention actually down in Austin, Texas, a couple of years ago, put on by Pantera, by Phil Anselmo, Housecore Records. Oh, and, right. Uh, yeah, and Sam Hain played. Uh, you know, it's really, really a lot of fun. It was a bunch of chainsaw people and a bunch of, uh, you know, Guar was there. So, you know, we had a, we had a great time down there, but, uh, you know, became uh, buddies with London May, you know, talked to him a bunch. He's a great guy. I believe it was London's yeah. birthday. Uh, just a few days ago. Well, dang. Thank you. Um, Some people never get old. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 speaking of birthdays, you know, uh, another another thing you and I have in common uh, that seems to be coming up a lot lately, and some something we both have in common with Spencer is we're all November cats. Yeah, that's right, Scorpio. Scorpio, and yeah, eleven eleven, man. They they told they told my mom that I would that my due date was Halloween and then I was exactly seven days late, so. <laughs> wow, you know Almost. what? My, my, mine was too, and I was eleven days late. So <laughs> I know it's so funny to you know to be told you were coming out on Halloween and then you end up for me I, I ended up on you know Veterans Day Army. <laughs> Right. I went from a monster to a peacenik, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm somewhere around like I, I you know. Guy Fox Day, or I don't even right. know on that day, but right. Something. Well, you know that means that that predicting birth is really not an exact science unless yes. unless you're doing a cesarean section. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's very funny because my my two daughters are five five May fifth and ten ten October tenth. So we're all we celebrate double dates in the family. Wow, five, you're five, 10, 11, 10, 11, five, 11. five and ten ten. Yeah, that's yeah. you know it, it's funny because my kids are, I'm. Uh, November 7th my son is April 7th and their mom is September 30th and our daughter is December 30th so there was like yeah there's a you're a you're a good dad to remember those dates those are pretty important I think we're doing some kind of alchemy here with the nice. you've got the double digits and we have the seven oh, yeah. seven and the 30 30 and I got I got married on uh, Valentine's Day um and I would like to say that it's uh because because of the romance, I mean that's certainly part of it, but it was also easier to remember. So you don't forget either one. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. When Valentine's Day comes, I'm like, oh yeah, or, hey, happy anniversary. Yeah. Um, so yes, the Silver Screen Con just seems like such a natural extension of uh, what Ice Nine Kills has been all about, and gathering, uh, you know, handpicking and curating some of his his favorite folks from the right horror universes and the music worlds. Um, I'm curious, you know, for you, as, as we're speaking right now, you just got back from a convention in my hometown, Indianapolis. Yes. You obviously have, have been to a lot of these great conventions. You know, the fans love you. They're, they're always very welcoming and having you there. Uh, as someone who is experienced and has undoubtedly seen the best and the worst of, of how they're run or, or what, you know, what the content is, what do you look for in a convention? You know, what do you, what do you think makes a, a, a good horror convention? Uh, I think it really comes down to uh, the guests, first and foremost. And I think that uh, the Silver Scream uh, lineup looks pretty great. So I think you guys are uh, ready to go on that score. Um, 
Let's see here. Um, yeah, I mean, for me as a as a guest, uh, it also really helps to uh, you know have a cool hotel mm -hmm. and have something to do before and after. Um, sure. And uh, I like to walk around a lot, so uh, to have it in a excuse me, have it in a place where there's a good walkabout. Uh, whether it's Indianapolis, uh, I was just actually in Monroeville, PA, doing a Night of the Living Dead reunion. The, Mer the yeah. Monroeville Mall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. walking around there, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know, the last, I haven't, I went there in about 2005. Mm -hmm. five, and obviously it looks pretty different, but I remember the, uh, the, the uh, lights in the parking lot. Yeah. The big thing, you know, there's definitely details that are, Yes. Still look the same. Yeah, and I was there. I actually they they put me in a room with uh Russ Streiner, who played the original Johnny, the Johnny and uh, the you know the original Night of the Living Dead, the black and white. And I was Johnny in uh in the Tom Savini 1990 color remake yeah. of Night of the Living Dead. So uh, it was funny to to be sitting in the same room with uh with Russ and kind of you know. You know, uh, swapping, uh, they're coming to get you, Barbara. <laughs> uh, that's what Russ said. I, I added, because in, in the shot in the, in the 1990 color version, uh, there was a long shot. I say that right as Barbara and I are getting out of our car. Then we have a long walk through the cemetery to our mother's grave. And uh, there was nothing scripted. So I ad-libbed, they're horny, Barbara. They've been dead a long time. And uh, George Romero thought that was hilarious. He was, you know, certainly the producer of it, and uh, he liked that, so that stayed in. But uh, that was a lot of fun, uh, you know, going back to Monroeville. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, our our version was not quite at the mall, but it was fun just for me because I'm such a fan of uh, the trilogy, mm -hmm. you know, to to be in the Monroeville Mall and to uh, to be hanging out. You know, we hung out. We had a a reunion so there was you know that was obviously russ but there was uh, billy butler patty tallman tony todd amazing you know, from the original uh from the uh the 1990 version tom sabini was there so that was just a, it was a that was a ball that's the other thing that i do when i go to these um conventions it's also fun for me to uh see old friends um uh, you know in days of the dead indianapolis this past weekend uh, my buddy Ken Forey, uh, with whom I worked on Devil's Rejects, mm -hmm. played Charlie, you know, uh, and he's uh, great. And also, speaking of uh, Dawn of the Dead, amazing actor. Um, also, uh, uh, Kane Hodder, uh, mm -hmm. Jason in four Jason movies. Um, it, will, it will be with Kane again at Solar Scream. Yes, Comics. that's right. And, uh, and he's, he's hilarious. He actually was the stunt coordinator of Devil's Rejects. And did an amazing job. Those stunts are, those are awesome. I do some terrible things to people, thanks to Kane. And they look, I mean, they look terrible. They were, you know, nobody got particularly hurt. I got, I got kind of, I got, I got a uh, bruised rib from getting kicked by uh, Diamond Dallas Page. But if you're going to get, you know, if you're going to get injured and have a bruised rib, yeah. it might as well be the former, you know, heavyweight wrestling champion of the world. Indeed, but uh, he he did kick me in the ribs. Uh, so, uh, but I don't know if Kane was around for that, or I think everybody assumed that since uh, Diamond Dallas Page, you know, was a professional wrestler, he would know how to maybe pull a punch. But uh, and I guess not. Um, I was just about to say anybody who 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 uh, you know beats the drum of uh, pro wrestling is fake. Uh, doesn't yeah. really understand a athletics or sports because no. uh, you know I was. Not, not to name drop, but Spencer and I were hanging out with Chris Jericho at Comic Con, right. and he's walking around with a broken nose. He's got oh yeah, a couple nights before he was getting hit in the face with a barbed wire bat, I think, and yeah, uh, yeah. and then he, that breaks your nose. Yeah. <laughs> so you know they might have a, a, a choreography and storylines and all that stuff, but those guys are beating the hell out of their bodies. Oh yeah, no, I, I uh, I'm I'm buddies with Mankind. I was at a convention with him. I uh, was buddies with uh, the late great uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Oh God, my, and, he's uh, my number yeah. one favorite. He's ah, favorite. he was such a great guy. You know, wonderful guys, and it's so funny because a lot of times people think that uh, you know, if you're in uh, wrestling or the horror business, 
you know, you're going to go home and torture animals or have yeah. you know somebody in the basement that you're cutting in half. Um, but actually, it turns out that between the pro wrestlers I've met and the and the horror people I've met, you know, most of us are pretty chill. <laughs> you know, we're actually yeah. like decent human beings. Um, and it's not even like that we get it out in the horror movies and then we come home and we're all flushed of, you know, evil thinking. I mean, I, I think wonderfully evil thoughts, but, um, you know, I, I, I know the difference between acting out, acting out on them and just, you know, yeah. letting them go. Um, oh, yes. And the other the other horror icon uh, this past weekend was uh, Doug Bradman, uh, who is, uh, you know, pinhead in uh, the Hellraiser movies. And he, you know, he's a great guy. I mean, all these guys are really a lot of fun. I had dinner with Kane and uh, and Doug, you know, you know, kicking around with uh, Ken. Flew back with him, Dan Roebuck, who, uh, you know, is playing Grandpa Munster and Rob Zombie's new yeah. Munster movie that's coming out. So, yeah, these guys are all really, you know, good guys, as it turns out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we're yeah, gonna. Have, uh... So I think the fan, the fans that are a little reticent. You know, I, uh, that that come up and look at your pictures on your table and see a bunch of dismembered corpses and chainsaws and straight razors. You know, hey, dude, it's uh, there's no reason not to come to the convention. And you know, maybe you'll get lucky and you know lose a finger. <laughs> get, a, get a Texas chainsaw <laughs> manicure, right yeah, there. Right, that's exactly uh, it. Yeah, we're gonna have Doug Bradley there at, at Silver Screen Con as well. That's wonderful. Well, he's in like, number. Like yourself, he's got that crossover into metal. You know, he, he did yeah. some of his acting on some of the, a couple of Cradle of Filth albums. And what you just said about- And, and a big fan of Ghost and they love, yeah. they love Doug. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, what you said about, uh, you know, folks from uh, horror movies and such, you know, it's, it's been very true in the metal world as well. You know, yeah. getting to know metal bands and writing about them and interviewing them and things like that. They're, you know, guys in Slipknot who run Knotfest, you know, they're yeah, the nicest right guys in the world. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I, love, I love Corey, you know, I mean, we've, we've uh, hung out a bunch of times at different conventions. I say the last time I saw him was at a horror convention in Atlanta and uh, he's a great guy. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, and I've, I've done music with, uh, with Phil Anselmo, who's now on tour, uh, you know, kind of a revamped uh, Pantera. That's what that's um, that's what we they're did, talking about next year. Yeah, yeah we, we put a uh, we put up uh, put out an EP called uh, Bill and Phil Songs of Darkness and Despair. That's right. Which you can get online on Spotify and you know iTunes and all that. And uh, of course, I've worked with Buckethead, the world's greatest guitar mm -hmm. player, at least you know in my opinion. And um, you know, and uh, I, I work with uh, a guy named Ronnie Sharon. We've just put out a, an album. We have a band called uh, Spider Mountain. And we just put out a new album called The Devil Rides West. And that's on Spotify. And, and when I come to a Silver Scream, I'll be bringing some actual physical CDs for yes. anybody who remembers what those were. <laughs> but they'll, They're coming back, actually. It, it, you know, yeah. uh, Billboard's been talking about, you know, vinyl, obviously, everyone knows is, yeah. is coming back. But CDs have ticked up for the first time since the initial. Well, also, I, I hear cassettes are coming. Yep. When yeah. I when I first met Buckethead, we uh, you know Buckethead was a big Chop Top fan, as was Rob Zombie, which is how I got the uh, part of Otis Driftwood. But when I was um, uh, you know working with Buckethead, I said you know I would love to let's let's get together and make some music, and I, I I'll sell cassettes at uh, the Fangoria convention because mm -hmm. I, I looked around and I you know when I first started going to conventions I I looked around and everybody had their eight by ten pictures. But nothing more than that. And I thought, right. you know, let's give the fans some cool stuff. So yeah. Buckethead and I formed a band called Corn Bugs. And we started making crazy music. And, and I did the, a lot of the vocals as Chop Top. <clears throat> and uh, we did some crazy music. And, and I would sell uh, the, the little little cassettes of uh, Corn Bugs, you know, for 10 bucks at, uh, at these different conventions. So, you know, that sometimes the, the conventions actually inspired me to... You know to do more music uh just uh really because i wanted to make sure that the fans had a great experience they had more than just a picture um you know that's why i bring uh, you know i have chopped up i just got a guy that uh, uh makes my uh, chop top head plates so i actually have uh, a big bag of them somewhere. oh no way yeah let's see wait yeah bear with me i'm over here 
Yeah. Oh, amazing. <laughs> amazing. Hey, lick my plate, you dog dick. <laughs> no. So I have, a, I have a bag of, of chop top head plates. So, you know, I try to, you know, mix it up and give people uh, some cool stuff to, uh, you know, cool alternatives to your uh, basic 8x10. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, the, yeah. and that's and that's what you want is to be able to have a, a piece of the movies and, and bands and everything yeah. that we love. And, yeah. and that is that's a piece of a character that we love. Piece of history. <laughs> Indeed. Um, you know, Buckethead's got to be the only musician who can say that he's made music with you, Vigo Mortensen, Elijah Wood and Axl Rose. <laughs> That's yeah, like, that's I don't right. know that there's any other discography that covers. What about it. Surge from uh, what is it? System yes. of a Down. Yeah. Yes, yeah, System of a Down. Yeah. Yeah. We worked with him too, and Jack Black. I mean, it's a it, what a what yeah. a pedigree of. Uh, it speaks to that guy's talent also that he would even end up in those situations. Well, it's amazing. I mean, I remember him describing uh, Dawn over uh, a soccer stadium in Brazil that seated. I think it seats 400,000 people, right. like maybe the world's largest soccer stadium. And Buckethead uh, standing there on stage with Guns N' Roses, uh, opening and starting to play the opening, uh, you know, guitar licks for uh, Welcome to the Jungle. And then just, you know, as soon as you just, just started playing that and this roar comes out of this gigantic crowd at dawn, you know, the sun starting to rise and uh, you're in Brazil and you're playing Welcome to the Jungle. In my humble opinion, one of the great rock and roll songs of all times. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just, you know, hearing that, that description was so exciting to me. Just knowing that someone had that experience. I mean, it doesn't matter if it was me or not. I mean, that was just, that just, uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, and, and uh, and since we did talk about a lot of your musical dalliances, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention hearing Chop Top in uh, Primus song. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm still I'm still yeah. waiting for the royalties on that. <laughs> now, many, many years ago, I was at a Rob Zombie birthday party, and and Les Claypool was there, and uh, we were introduced. I said, "Hey, man, where the where the royalties for uh, you know for Dog Will Hunt?" He goes, "I <laughs> was it." So. <laughs> Still waiting on those, but uh, yeah, no, it's very, very exciting. I'm very happy that he, uh, you know, sampled that. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah. let's just call it a duet, Chop Top. And, yeah, right. Uh, label, you know, it's duet. Islands in the stream of yeah. of horror rock. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that, that's great, man. Well, I'm I'm looking so forward to having you at the Silver Screen and yes. diving into. So, I mean, there's just there's so much to talk about because you've uh, been a part of so many great things that are uh, fun and have elevated. Yeah, so let's let's not overlook the passing of the great Paul Sorvino, uh, oh, who right. uh, really was the, one of the mainstays of Repo, the genetic opera. Right. Uh, Aaron Bowsman's uh, Right, because we all think, uh, yes. you know, uh, we all think about, obviously, Goodfellas, and uh, yeah. but that's right, Aaron Bowsman, uh, yeah. Devil's, Devil's Carnival, of course, you know, he, yeah. Yeah. Um, Lots of Saw movies. Lots yeah. of Saw movies. But uh, Repo, the genetic opera. Paul, Paul Sorvino is great. He played my father in it. And uh, really a wonderful man. I, I met him over the years at different conventions and things. And uh, just love Paul. Really just thought he was a great guy. So R.I.P. R.I.P. Uh, yeah. So right. anyway, we don't have to end on a... <laughs> no, it, it's <laughs> just... It, it's... A down note, but it's a sweet note, not a down note. Yeah, but... and it's and it's interesting, you know, that... It, so close to Jimmy Kahn and Ray Liotta. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, the actor that played Molly Walnuts on, you know, our, what, what's what's likely the best TV show of all time, uh, The Sopranos, uh, you know, to leave uh, uh, Tony uh, Sirico. Right, um, right, yeah. You know, to, to lose all of those. Well, apparently the, uh, you know, what is it? The, uh, uh, the mortality rate of the human race is uh, 100%. <laughs> Right. Uh, with with the notable exceptions of uh, Jesus and Dracula, that's yeah. What's the? Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know if that stays in this. What's the, what's podcast. the nobody, no, nobody nobody gets out alive, right? <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, Jared. Okay, that's that's my favorite. I'm 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 Morrison all the way, man. 
<laughs> I, I saw Jimi Hendrix play with, uh, you know, he when he was touring uh, Are You Experienced? No. Oriental Theater in Chicago. Uh, open for him was uh, the Soft Machine. So I, I guess that's, uh, see, I, I've earned the white in my beard. Yeah. But I saw Jimi Hendrix. Indeed, Chicago. Yeah. Uh, so we've got it between the, uh, and between the Jasons, you know, first Jason, yeah. another Illinois guy. He's going to be at the Silver Screen Con. Another whole oh, yes, good old Ari. Yeah. yeah. So we're yeah, yeah we're gonna have Ari and Kane right. together. So it'll be yeah. it'll be like your uh Romero verse moment. Yes. <laughs> two, two guys, uh, two guys who are one guy. It's very yeah. metaphysical. Um well, Bill, thank you so much for taking the time. Yes, yeah, uh, my pleasure. With us here. Uh, and of course, big hello and salute from uh, all of the NotFest team who love right you on. and appreciate you. Well, and I'm looking forward to it. I, I, in two weeks, I go off to uh, Pennsylvania to shoot a movie called The Fetus. And after The Fetus, I then go right from The Fetus to um, uh, Silver Scream. So that should be fun. <laughs> uh, and I may be covered with curds. I don't know. I don't know how I'm, <laughs> how who's I'm getting in, out of who's that. In, uh, who's in The Fetus with you? Um, well, right now, uh, I'm not really at liberty to say, but uh, it should be pretty cool. I, I can talk about a movie I dis, uh, did with uh, Kane Hodder a a Jasper. Couple, a couple of months ago. And right. that is, well, actually before that or after that, um, it's a movie called Hayride to Hell. And uh, we shot that in uh, also in Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania. And that should be coming out sometime in October. Because uh, I, I was going to ask you about uh, Jasper also, because that's Kane Hodder and the great yeah. Michael Berryman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we get around. Another uh, that's, an, that's another rock people... and horror person. You know? Yes. Girls yeah, have yeah. eyes Michael. and smoking oh. in the boys room. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love I love Michael. He's great. And uh, and this is I'm going to uh, really pull out my nerd cards right now, which is great, because if I messed anything up earlier that horror nerds will hit me up in the comments and say I got wrong. I'm going to pull this deep cut out. Michael Berryman was uh, the Skull Cowboy in The Crow, and uh, wow. unfortunately his right. his scenes didn't make it into the movie because of uh, you know they had two weeks left to shoot and the way they had to kind of reconfigure the the chronology of the narrative. The, the, right, the, you know he, he he he's not bitter about it. I've I've gotten to interview him about it before, and he has uh, great memories of uh, you know working with Brandon Lee. And yeah. if people go on YouTube, you can actually find some of those. Uh, oh, very maybe, cool. Uh, there are a bunch of prosthetics. And, and another another great guy, you know, a monster, a scary yeah. guy. People sure that the, the grist of many nightmares and yet yeah. uh, really the sweetest guy. So <laughs> it shows you, folks, if you want if you want a bunch of nice guys, you know, look, look no further than the horror genre and girls. I mean, the, the women of horror are fantastic. Great friends with Elvira. Yeah, I just, you know, there's so many PJ Souls. I mean, there's so many. Priscilla Barnes, thank you for that Kahiki Palms motel scene and Devil's Rejects. I mean, yeah, it's just, uh, it's amazing. You, Danielle maybe, Harris, who will also be. Yeah. Oh my God, I just worked with her on a movie called Natty Knox, N-A-T-T-Y-K-N-O-C-K-S. Uh, it just, and of course, we just worked, uh, you and I just worked with uh, Scout Taylor Compton. We did. We were all, we were awesome. all in, a, in a very warm courtroom together. Yeah, in our Ice Nine Kills video. So, <laughs> anyway, thank you, thank you for having me on. I do. Thanks appreciate so much. It. It's a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you. See you soon. See you next month. Yeah. Okay. Thanks I'll so much. see you there. Okay. Hello, Danvers. Mm -hmm.